I'm going to present this review with the context of the Galaxy Fold 3 review. You're not required to watch that first, but it will provide a clearer picture for this one. My scepticism for foldable smartphones has dissipated somewhat after spending some extended time with Samsung's bigger Fold. And coming into the Flip 3 review, I was rather excited and positive about experiencing this new to me form factor. Were my prior feelings valid for the Flip, or should you go out and buy one? Well, thanks to Vodafone for sending it out for me to review. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas, and this is my review of the Samsung Galaxy Flip 3. Right then, let's start off by talking about pricing. This thing is £950 for the 128 model, or £1,000 for the 256GB model. And I would recommend you go with the latter. Not only for its resale value, but the fact it's only 50 quid to double the storage. I mean, you are getting literally double the amount of space for not much extra, and you're already shelling out almost a grand anyway. I think given the technology in this smartphone and the fact it's kind of bleeding edge, that's not a bad price. That puts it the same price as the starting model of the iPhone 13 Pro. And whilst that's an objectively better smartphone overall, it doesn't have two screens and one of them doesn't fold. Or should it be flip? An important thing to note is that even in Europe, you get the Snapdragon model of the Samsung smartphone. So you get the Snapdragon 888 over the equivalent Exynos chipset, meaning better performance, usually better battery life, and usually better graphics performance. And those are all true here. I found gaming to be much more enjoyable on both of these, even over the Galaxy S21 Ultra, just because the European S21 Ultra has the Exynos chipset. It's not quite as powerful. Of course, with 8GB of RAM, it's pretty fast. Very fast, in fact. And as a result, this thing provided a fantastic experience in everyday tasks and gaming alike. One UI 3.1 based on Android 11 is very clean. One of my favourites. I found the animations to be smooth and I like the clean interface. I feel like a broken record talking about One UI. It is just very clean and it's hard to describe that. I mean, all the animations and the way that the thing is laid out, it feels like it was made for the hardware that it's running on. Maybe it would look slightly out of place on an iPhone shaped device, but on Samsung's hardware, I feel like the software just works. And Samsung has committed to at least two platform upgrades, which is great because when you're shelling out a grand for a smartphone, you want it to last at least two years. Everyone I showed this device to was impressed and actually preferred this sort of form factor compared to the Fold, which is where I sit actually. I actually much prefer this flip form factor. And give another generation, I would probably own one if they can make the, the crease a little bit better because the crease is like a big turn off for me. It would be great. And also one thing I much prefer about this one to the Fold is the fact that it has a normal punch hole camera on the in, inside, which is great because it takes so much better photos. Like the quality is so much better. And like the notch, you don't you just don't see the punch hole like after a few days with it like the flip is a, a good example of this because the screen is so tall that you're generally not looking at the top of the screen anyway and when you do after a couple of days it just blurs out you don't even notice the punch hole the display though is very impressive and one that caught the attention of everyone that witnessed it when i had my review unit not only for the fact that it folds but due to the big bright 6.7 inch 120 hertz amoled panel that is slightly taller than 1080p. It's a brilliant main display, and aside from being a little big for my average size hands, it's otherwise great to use. It's the front screen though that caught my attention more than the main screen. It's well placed, of a very high resolution, and kind of felt natural, and not like I needed to go out of my way to use it. I want to cover the cameras before the battery life. The three cameras on the flip, namely the 12 megapixel main, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and 10 megapixel selfie camera, all perform well, and whilst not best in class, they are pretty damn good. I actually really enjoyed taking photos during my review period with the flip three, more so than I thought I would, to be honest. Samsung's processing still likes to accentuate the colors a tiny bit. It's not overbearing, and I think the colors still look pretty accurate and true to life, whilst making them a little punchier and nicer to look at. It's actually very similar to my experience with the Galaxy Fold 3 recently that I tested, which makes sense because some of the sensors are actually the same, namely the ultra-wide and the front-facing camera. The main camera on here does seem to be smaller of a sensor than the main on the Fold 3, which makes sense, especially given the price and where they sit on the smartphone. As long as you're not a massive mobile shutterbug, this thing takes great photos and I think you'll be very happy with the results. 
Battery life is to be expected not the best. It's a 3300 mAh battery and given the 6.7 inch main screen doesn't quite add up. Of course, you have to allow for more space in a foldable smartphone, so I'm not going to bash Samsung for this. I think it's relatively reasonable. It's just you're not going to get the best battery life out of it compared to something like a 4500 mAh battery that you'd find in the equivalent Xiaomi, but that isn't a foldable. To be honest, battery life was fine. So I use about 60 to 70% brightness, uh, mostly Wi-Fi, a little bit of LTE, a little bit of Bluetooth here and there for my Bluetooth earbuds. But other than that, not a heavy user. I don't play a lot of games on my smartphone, maybe getting two, two and a half, three hours screen on time during the day and would end the day with about 30%, 40%. Now that's not bad whatsoever. I, I don't think that I would really complain if I had this smartphone, but I'm not a heavy user. If you play a lot of mobile games, if you use a lot, you know, you watch YouTube or Netflix on your lunch breaks and stuff like that, then maybe you are going to need to top it up. And for most people, topping up a smartphone during the day is fine. It really does depend on what your situation is and where you come from and like what your day to day activities are. So if I had to rate the battery life out of 10, let's just say a good seven. So all right, just not the best in the world. Could it be better? well maybe if they made the thing thicker but then that would also make it not very nice to hold so yeah i'll stick with what it's got should you buy this smartphone i think you should if you're into foldables so if i was going to buy any foldable this would be the one by a country mile i don't really like the fold 3 in that it feels a bit big and like slightly less well built compared to the flip but i think the reason for that is the fact that the hinge is physically smaller and that even though the crease is in the middle and it's more likely you're going to touch that than on the fold, because it's smaller, it doesn't quite feel as bad. And I really like the way that this thing sits in the pocket because it's not tall. And a lot of smartphones are tall these days with the introduction of the high aspect ratio. It means they always stick out of your pocket. And if you bend over and you've got sort of like a short, shallow pocket, then it's just going to fall out. But with the flip, because it's more square than it is long when it's folded, when you put it in your pocket, it sits nicely. I also like the fact that the fingerprint scanner is placed, well, where you'd expect it, and it's a capacitive one and not an under-display one, because under-display fingerprint scanners, for me, they're just not worth it. Use something like a capacitive one, the one on the Samsung is great, and on the Fold it was also very good as well. And on stuff like the S10e, it was great on the S10e as well, they, they are so much better, in my opinion, no one will change my mind on that. I like this sort of off-white kind of look to it, like the two-tone. I think that looks really great. I think the frame around the outside, whilst it makes the phone feel quite heavy, it does give you more sort of confidence that it's not going to break. The normal punch hole instead of the undisplay punch hole, again, so much better for a selfie camera, just way better. Like we've been doing it for a while anyway. The technology has matured, just keep it like that. And the big thing for me is the fact that you can get one of these in its base configuration for the same price as an iPhone 13 Pro. Now, like I've said in other reviews, the 13 Pro is probably objectively better, but it's such a cool device, like the, the Flip 3, and the fact that you get that with the Snapdragon chipset, 128 gigs of storage, it's like a good flagship smartphone, but the fact that it's also a foldable display, you know, and, and those things aren't, aren't cheap to uh, manufacture and implement. The fact that you get that for the same price as a more traditional flagship, that's good. We're only going to see more of that, hopefully, as long as there aren't huge shortages of everything else and we end up spending two or three grand on a smartphone, which is scary because that might actually happen. Anyway, let's stop being existential for a second. The fact that you can get a bleeding edge tech product for the same price as a normal flagship, for me, that's great. And if I was if I was going to spend like a grand on a smartphone, maybe I'll go for the Flip. It would be between the iPhone 13 Pro and the Flip 3. The Flip 3 is just so cool this is a really good smartphone to buy if you want something that's different that's just not another slab with a domino on the back then get the flip 3 5g it's a fantastic smartphone i want to thank vodafone for sending it out these guys have been just sending me every smartphone that i've been reviewing between them and damien i don't think i actually need to go and buy any smartphones speaking of damien i want to thank him for sending out all the smartphones i just recently sent those back and then he sent me a bunch of smartwatches. So we have, I believe, five smartwatches that I'm going to be reviewing over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to try and sprinkle them in between smartphone content, maybe some game console content, because I've got quite a few of those in recently. And we'll try and make it more varied instead of just Vodafone smartphones. Please keep sending them Vodafone. They're great, but I need to disperse them with other things as well. 
And with all that rambling out of the way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like if you did, and if you didn't, dislike and tell me in the comments why. If you're a Samsung fanboy, you can leave right now, because we don't like fanboys on this channel. I've made that incredibly clear over the past three years. And I want to give a massive shout out to my patrons for being continually supportive. Thank you so much, guys. It really does help out the channel. And thanks to everyone who interacts with the video, who watches the videos, because you guys are great. And without you, I probably wouldn't be doing this. So with that all said and done, thanks for watching, guys. I've been Ryan Thomas, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.